so um, we had a little look at the start of MP and one of the things that arises in that cassette is this very particular rising punch, this flying swallow punch. Agezuki, not an uppercut rising punch, but a punch that comes out at mid-level and then sweeps up high in the final portion of it. So it's got a particularly whip-like motion as it goes up. And naturally, when people try and decide what this thing does, you'll see things like a guy comes in with a second punch to the face, we're going to parry that down and away, and then we're going to bring our fist up underneath the chin. And the risk with that, of course, is that these bones in the back of the hand are very small. And if you introduce them to a solid bone like the jawbone, which is, you know, structured to receive uh, a certain level of impact or a certain level of pressure, where the bones are made to receive pressure this way, and we're now making pressure with them this way, that we're not going to get our best effect from that kind of punch. So, our principle this week is to say, let's have a look at the rest of the movement. Let's not concentrate on what the thing looks like, that it's going to make contact up here, uh, but instead to look at the rest of the movement. So we know that on the way it's coming in at mid, and then it's rising to go higher at the end. So if we take the kind of attack that might really happen, the big right hook is our favourite to show in these kind of situations, we'd be like this, that's coming in there like that, and now I've obviously got to be worried about the rest of the things that are coming in. So this arm I know where it is, the rest of it might be there any one second or not, but I know where this arm is. So I can shoot my arm through underneath here and then belt it up. Now if while I'm doing that I can get this to occur, then the elbow faces the floor and we're making an impact this one. Obviously, working with a training partner, we have to take great care because this kind of impact we just don't want to do on another human being. So we're here like this. <coughs> And that's about as far as I want to go. As soon as I see him raised to his toes, I know that we're at the point where his weight's about to hang from his shoulder and we're going to cause a problem up here. Probably not an elbow break, if it's fair to say. Probably going to cause him some damage up in the shoulder rather than actually on the arm itself. However, if we had extended that greatly and then done it, you can see how that might just cause us a problem in the elbow as well, or instead of the shoulder. So our application, we look at the whole move, but we know that the contact happens part way through, and the damage is done by the time we reach the end of it. That gives us our application for this so-called rising punch. And the principle is, why are we looking at the knuckles when the whole of the arm is in motion?